In today's video, we are talking about dynamic query referencing. Now, obviously these three words wouldn't make any sense to you and you would not be able to judge that what exactly am I going to talk about in this video, but this is a pretty nice technique. This is going to help you solve some corner problems and some interesting cases in Power Query. Stick around and you're going to have fun. Let's start. All right, I'm in this Power Query window right here and I've loaded a few queries just to help you understand that the case that I'm working with. Now, these are three fake queries that I have created, which is Retailer 1, Retailer 2, and Retailer 3. Assume that there is some data that I'm trying to clean and every single Retailer query is a separate set of cleaning exercise that I have to do and then combine all the three retailers together. Now, in case you were doing that manually, then when you create a new query for the fourth retailer, you'll have to come back to Power Query and add that query into the model so that all the retailers get loaded within the query. Um, in case you were doing it manually, you would probably have to maybe select one or two queries right here, go to the Home tab, and there is something called like an append, uh, append as new, and then here you're just maybe gonna create three or more tables and then select all the three tables right here, query two and query three, and all the three tables are then going to be joined together. However, the problem with this particular technique is that it just hard codes the three retailer names or the retailer queries right in here. So the next time you're gonna get the fourth retailer, it's not going to refresh. I'm looking at an approach which is where it lets me select all the three queries which have the name retailer in it, and then I would be able to pick up as many queries as I have. So how do I do that kind of stuff? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna maybe get rid of this particular query that I have created. Uh, how do I delete that? Delete and go. And then I'm gonna create a new query. So new query, other sources, and I'm gonna click on blank query. Now, Power Query calls, like you and I in Power Query call these things as queries, but Power Query internally call these things as sections. Now you might have heard of the shared keyword that displays all the functions, but this time we're gonna use the sections keyword to get the list of all the queries that we have made in Power Query. So that's pretty interesting. So I'm just gonna go to the source set right here, start to write the equals to sign and write the hash and then write sections and press enter and this is going to give me a record. If I peek into that record, I'm gonna find that all the queries that I have created so far are going to be listed right here in that particular record. Funny thing enough, you're going to find that the query that I'm working on at the moment, which is called query one, is also present here, which is going to create something like a cyclical referencing, which we will deal with it in a bit. But for now, we have been able to get all the queries, right? That's interesting. Now, from this query, I'd like to pull up that record and the name of that column is section one. So I'm just gonna create a square bracket and call that section one. If you don't know this kind of stuff, like how do I extract a column from a record? I did a video a few weeks ago, which is where I explained about the basics of the M language. If you haven't taken a look at that, I suggest that you please take a look at that video. All right, so we have a record. Within that record, I'm pulling apart a column. I press enter and I get all the queries that I was able to peek in just a while ago. Now, at the moment, this is a record and I can't really do much with a record. I have to convert this record into a table to be able to get all the menu options active. So if you just go up and take a look, a lot of these menu options are inactive because as of now we are working with a record. So let's just convert the record into a table. The function that I'm gonna use is something like a record dot to table. And I'm just gonna start the bracket. Inside of that, this record goes in here. Close the bracket and press enter and what I get is the record converted into a table and now I can use all the UI to be able to filter my table. Now, what do I do here? You can see that I just need the retailer one, retailer two and retailer three as the query is dynamically selected. So what I can do is I can just go ahead and go to the name column and say that I'd like to pick up um, all the names that begin with the word retailer and that's what I can do, so retailer. And as soon as I click on OK, now as of now, because I wrote the R uppercase in the retailer, it's necessary for any analyst or anybody who's working on this to be able to write R uppercase. Now, in case I want to override that requirement, I can add an input, uh, like an optional input parameter in my query, which is where I can say, hey, please ignore the case. How do I do that? I'm gonna say text.start with, the first input is the name column, which is this particular column, and what do I want to look for in that column? After that, I can put in a comma, and I can say that, uh, please ignore the case, so ordinal case ignore, um, that's the function that I write, press enter. Nothing changes, it's just that you lose the ability to select everything with UI, uh, the gear icon that appears right here, but that is okay, you have now ignored the case successfully. Now, we have three tables right here, which contain some zero data. 
all that I would want to do is just combine the tables, expand the tables or whatever that I would want to do with these tables. And I am kind of good to go. So this was the way in order for you to extract the queries that you have it listed right here dynamically using the sections keyword in Power Query. Let me know if this is going to help you to solve any peculiar Power Query problems that you're facing. And if you have any questions around this, uh, please put them down in the comments and I'll be glad to reply. In the end, I'd like to give a big shout about my DAX and my Power Query courses in case you are starting out with Power BI and you'd like to build mastery over the fundamentals of Power Query, DAX and data modeling first and then try to solve more difficult, more challenging problem even of your own data. I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It's going to be super awesome. Thanks for staying all around all this while and I will catch you guys in the next one.